What's cracking, peeps? Your boy T-Money up in the heezy. I'm actually not in the heezy. Totally wrong about that. I am up in the where heezy. Uh, this is my office. Um, pretty non-luxurious, but this is where I do most of the work. Directly underneath my feet is the kitchen. That is where we make all of the sauce. Uh, but I'm not here to give you guys a tour of the layout of the warehouse. I'm here for a specific reason, and that is that there's company at my house has been all week so um, I have not had a chance to do any videos nor did I really have any reason to because up until today I didn't really have anything I had a few things like the shirt that I'm wearing I got a couple days ago um, but I used to and if you guys have been watching my videos for a while I used to have a Suspiria shirt uh, that I loved from a different company a different material but um, I don't know what happened to it honestly it probably wouldn't fit anymore anyway but I lost it and I love Suspiria uh, and so and I always love this like logo so I had to get it again um, but anyway so yeah I got I uh, hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas and I want to um, happy holiday whatever it is you celebrate um, but uh, I am going to do the 500 subscriber contest giveaway probably next weekend it's just been hectic family haven't had a lot of time um, but I'll get to that uh, so uh, look forward to that this upcoming Friday or Saturday evening. Uh, probably Saturday, because Friday, everybody's leaving. Um, I'll be back to work tomorrow, so just Saturday will be probably when I do that, so stay tuned for that. I'd like to get a few more entries for that as well, just because uh, there have been a few, but I'd like to see a few more for the 500. You know, it's a big thing, so um, I'd appreciate it if you guys would enter that contest if you haven't already, and I appreciate it if um, to those of you who have. So anyways, um, yeah, uh, I didn't really get a single movie, to be honest, for Christmas. Not a single one. Uh, my brother was going to get me a gift certificate for Diabolic. That didn't happen. It may happen. Uh, it's to be kind of seen in the future, but whatever. But it was kind of weird. It was the first Christmas in a long time, which is totally fine. Because Lord knows I, I buy enough movies on my own. Uh, but yeah, I just, you know... Um, I think everybody was anticipating that huge uh, swagger video and I just didn't have one. So, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I got like a bunch of stuff that I needed, like socks and gift cards to my daily, like Dunkin' Donuts and the pet advantage where I shop for my cat. Just stuff that I needed this year, mostly. I got a new Alexa as well. So I brought in the old Alexa, um, which I don't even think works, but maybe we'll get it working up here. We will see. Uh, it's to be determined. But yeah, so just like some cool stuff that I needed, really. Uh, no movies. So I made up for that on my own and I have a bag full of movies that came in. Now I opened everything earlier today just because uh, it would just be too much to unbox but mostly it's just uh, two packages from Diabolic DVD that are huge um, and then a couple other little weird uh, random things from like Amazon Germany and um, maybe one or two other places but I'm just going to dive in. There's no order to anything here. I just stuffed all the movies in a bag and I'm just going to tear through them. So again, hope everybody had a great Christmas. This is my post-Christmas uh, horror movie haul. So not really anything out of the ordinary. Probably would have done it anyway, if I'm being honest. But uh, I wanted to share with you guys what I got. So uh, First up, we have a new one from Shout Select, Murder by Death. Uh, you guys probably won't be surprised by my not having seen a lot of these movies this one included i've never seen it but it's from 1976 and um yeah it reminds me almost like a clue type movie maybe um yeah uh i'm gonna kind of have to burn through things but uh basically it's about a millionaire he's invited the world's greatest detectives to his mansion for the ultimate battle of wits uh and informing his guests that a member of the dinner party will be murdered at midnight so Sort of like a Clue meets um, a House on Haunted Hill style movie, I guess. I don't know. Murder by Death, 1976. Let me know your thoughts if you've seen it. Uh, next up is another one I have not seen, Dark of the Sun. It's a new release from Warner Archive. Uh, looks to be some sort of action exploitation romp starring Rod Taylor, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, so that's that one. New one from... Um, Warner Brothers, and it is from the year 1968, so cool. Explosive action type movie. Uh, this one was interesting, directed by Mario Baba, Knives of the Avenger. Uh, Cameron Mitchell, can't go wrong with that. Cameron Mitchell and, Bar and um, um, 
It's Mario Bava directing, so that's awesome. Uh, again, it's sort of like, I think, like a Robin Hoody type um, action adventure type movie. Uh, it's from 1966. It's Italian production, obviously. Uh, so that's cool. Knives of the Avenger. Uh, this is a new one from Garage House Pictures. Going to keep it rolling here because I do have a lot of stuff. Uh, really intrigued by this one, uh, Monstrosity. The the cover of this inside re reminds me so much of the trailer trauma. I think it's volume three or volume four. It's so similar. Uh, but yeah, this sounded pretty cool. It was not what I expected at all, but from, from reading the synopsis on the film, um, basically about uh, this dead body that's kind of mutated and crafted together by these people, kind of creating a Frankenstein Frankenstein like uh, creature who falls in love with a punk rock chick and they go on a murderous rampage type thing So uh, monstrosity not really what I expected, but it could be good and I love garage house pictures Also garage house pictures are now doing slip covers So the two releases that I have in this hall here are I believe the first two releases that they have put slip covers on so I'm not gonna open that up. They're all in their condoms So I'm not gonna open stuff for time's sake, but you do get the uh, ulterior cover artwork, the new slip cover, that sort of thing. Uh, this is another one, Weirdo the Beginning. Uh, it's a new one from Garage House Pictures, basically about a uh, loner dude who falls in love with a chick, but the pressures of society and um, mounting pressures from his mother uh, lead him to turn into a potential murderous rampage. That is Weirdo. Uh, next up is the classic Oliver or Olivier, I always forget how to pronounce it, Olivier, Oliver, I don't know, forgive me if I'm an idiot, I am, I'm sure, Nemesis, I do own the German edition of this, I did show that off recently, but it's fun, just the 90s, early 90s, Terminator, uh, cyborg, super cop, action, thriller type movie, uh, total ripoff of Terminator, but fun. Uh, then we have a Scream Factory release, beautiful film, I love this movie, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, awesome film i can't believe this got um it's strange what mo the movies that they're putting collector's editions out for recently and then some of the movies they're not i'm trying to think of an example of one that like surprised me that it wasn't a collector's edition but i can't off the top of my head but i just you know i wouldn't think this one would get the collector's edition treatment nor would i think the next one would well when you see it you'll know what i mean but yeah this is a great like atmospheric hammer horror film I think it's a hammer. Yeah, it is a hammer. Uh, and Christopher Lee's Dracula, can you really go wrong? Uh, I hadn't seen it in a while, but it's definitely one that I watched growing up with my dad quite a bit. So, happy to own it. Uh, between Warner and now that Scream Factory release, they've been putting out a lot of the Christopher Lee Dracula films, which is awesome. And that one is from uh, 1965. So, awesome. And... Uh, we have Starman, which is kind of dented up. I'm kind of bummed about that. But John Carpenter's first film, I believe. Maybe one of his earlier films for sure. I've never seen Starman. I've seen 95% of uh, John Carpenter's um, catalog, library, whatever you want to call it, films. Uh, I hadn't seen this one, though. Kind of like a, I guess, maybe sci-fi, action, adventure uh, type film. Don't really know. But it is from 1984. So this can't be one of his first films. I mix, I'm mixing this up with something else. Uh, yeah, for sure. But an earlier John Carpenter film, I guess, at that. Uh, again, it's a collector's edition starring Jeff Bridges as well, so that's awesome. Um, and... Yeah, so it's... Uh, oh, cool. It says, When a spacecraft shot down over Wisconsin, an alien, played by Jeff Bridges, arrives at the remote cabin of a distraught young widow, clones itself into the form of her recently deceased husband, the alien courses the shell shock Jenny. To, okay, cool. So it's kind of a sci-fi horror movie. Shows you how much I knew about that one. But John Carpenter, you can't go wrong. One of my favorite directors, for sure. Just a movie I was never, by nature, interested in. By nature of the title, I guess. Uh, so, anyways, that's that. Uh, this one is from Kino Lorber. It is The House That Wouldn't Die. Awesome. Haven't seen it before, but really stoked to check this one out. Uh, brand new 2K Master of the Film. Uh, Ruth Bennett has inherited, played by Barbara Stanwyck, which is awesome, has inherited an old house in Gettysburg, PA, Amish country. She moves into the house with her niece. The house was built before the Revolutionary War and said to be haunted by the spirits of its original inhabitants. With the help of Pat McDougall, a local professor and one of his students, 
They delve into the history of the house and find a scandal that involves a Revolutionary War general who was suspected of being a traitor and his daughter who had disappeared after eloping with her boyfriend, a young British soldier. The spirits of the general and his daughter take possession of Pat and Sarah's bodies and a dark secret is revealed. So cool. Sounds awesome. Really stoked on that one as well as this one. Um, really excited for this. Whatever happened to Aunt Alice, I've heard nothing but good things about this movie. 1969. Brand new 4K scan of the film. Uh, Geraldine Page and Ruth Gordon sharpen their paws on each other in this chilling thriller about a lost fortune, a mad hiris, and a housekeeper hell-bent on digging up the truth. Miss Maribel is a society matron who's had some shocking news. Her late husband left her only a stamp collection. Determined to maintain her extravagant lifestyle, she takes advantage of an unlikely new source of income, her housekeeper. Z, sorry, plural. Uh, by robbing them, but not only their life savings, savil, savils, savings, uh, and also their lives. The turnover rate for help speeds faster than a revolving door until Mrs. Maribel's latest hire, Miss Dominic, develops a drive to unearth the terrible secret buried in the front yard. Cool. Murder mystery, maybe? Sounds fun. Uh, another one uh, from, uh, it's a new one actually from uh, Scorpion releasing, Blind Date. Never seen this movie. Christy Alley. Uh, from 1984 as well. Uh, <clears throat> Struck by hidden blindness, ad executive Jonathan Ratcliffe is frustrated when doctors can find nothing wrong with him. With the aid of his girlfriend, he consults a top eye doctor who fits him with an experimental device allowing him to see with the aid of a computer interface and brain electrodes. Meanwhile, a taxi driver is taking young women up to their apartments, sedating them and performing a, a, fatal, a little fatal amateur surgery. Their paths inevitably converge as a serial killer starts cutting too close to home. Um, and it's directed by uh, Nico Mastrakis, who did Island of Death, among other um, weird Greek movies, Greek horror flicks, I guess. He did a few, I know that. Uh, but Island of Death is the only one that comes to mind. I know he did a few others. Um, next up, do I need to say anything about this movie? No. It's fun. It's not a good film. This release for Waterworld just blows my fucking mind. Um... Get a little bit closer to y'all. Uh, it's beautiful. It's, you know, standard hard box, booklet, poster, uh, keep case inside, water world. It's cheesy action adventure, kind of post-action exploitation adventure film, I guess. Uh, it's fun. I like it. I've always loved it. Just a kind of a 90s TV cheesy flick um, that I enjoy. I always did enjoy this movie in a weird, stupid sort of way from... Right smack dab in the middle of the 90s, 1995. Beautiful release. Then we have another beautiful release uh, of Crimson Peak. Uh, I do enjoy this film quite a bit. This release is fantastic. Um, so basically you have a J card, really nice back. Then you have inside a book. Really, really, really nice. Now with the Criterion box set that I own of, um, of um, the director... Uh, oh, drawing a blank on his, on his name now. Uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, films and this. I just have like a beautiful uh, Guillermo del Toro collection going now. So I'm really stoked. I've seen this movie multiple times. I enjoy it. Uh, it's not my favorite uh, of his movies, but I do enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, that bathroom sequence is awesome too. Um, I'll never... Probably one of my favorite films. I didn't like... With this movie, I didn't really like the ghost uh, effects. Uh, CGI ghost effects, I guess. I wasn't a huge on that, but... I got past it. I do love the gothic feel to the film and stuff, so it's enjoyable. Now, Jesse had forgotten um, to send this out to me previously. It is a uh, brand new edition of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, 4K, uh, pretty limited. It's from Cult Media, four discs, I believe three discs, uh, just all kinds of stuff um, from the film. Lord knows I didn't need another release of this movie, but... I'm a big fan, so I had to have it. Uh, Midnight Classics, they've been putting out some pretty awesome stuff. Um, so, cool. Yeah, that's really nice. Thanks, Jesse, for sending that out to me. Uh, and then we have uh, When a Stranger Calls. This is a great movie, classic, original. Finally, I could put the um, the uh, two-disc DVD Blu-ray combo pack. Or not, uh, the two-disc Blu-ray. Uh, it's like a double feature that this movie was on with something else. Uh, deep Sea, uh, some some um, water horror movie but um ocean whatever but yeah it's a great movie it's great packaging again right on par with arrow it's basically like 
identical to uh, the packaging of um, the Arrow limited edition releases like Waterworld. Uh, it's weird that they did something different for um, Crimson Peak. I've never seen that style of special edition from Arrow, but this is just like that. Hard box, poster, booklet, key case edition with a black case. Love how the black case matches the black box. Really, really nice touch. And I love that cover artwork as well. This movie is classic. If you haven't seen it, definitely a good early, early slasher film, uh, perhaps before the name slasher was t uh, coined. And yeah, it's great. It's really, really good. From 1994? No, wait a second. Fuck. Is this the remake? No. Why does it say 1994? I know this movie's not from 1994. Now I'm going to have to go in it. Is it really? No. It's when a stranger calls the original. And when a stranger... Wait, what do you have here? Okay, so you get a compact disc, which is the... Um, Nineteen seventy nine is when the film came out, but what's going on here? Why is it saying nineteen ninety four copyright? That's really, really, really throwing me off. Um, but it appears to be a Blu ray and a uh, CD soundtrack uh, based on the infamous urban legend featuring most of the famous gripping opening scenes in horror movie history. Uh, Fred Walton's When a Stranger Calls. Oh wait, so is this the remake? This is definitely the original film, now that I'm seeing the stills and stuff. Uh, that is so weird. If you guys could answer that question for me. Um, what the 1994 business is. When a Stranger Calls Back is from 1993. But I don't see that this is when a stranger calls back at all. Uh, a student babysitter has her evening disturbed when the phone rings. On, yeah, yeah, that's the synopsis. Uh, CD soundtrack, 40 page, perfect bound booklet, reversible poster with artwork. Uh, nowhere on here does it have the original um production date but whatever i'm gonna go with 79 it says 1994 not sure what that is and two more things uh i forgot to show you guys this in the beginning of the update i had grabbed this i went to go get a tattoo like two weeks ago in brattleboro and there's this pretty rad like it's like a walking back in time uh type store um where they sell a bunch of used vhs dvds blu-rays cds that sort of thing and uh just really cool dudes i got to chatting with them and um I found a few other movies, but it turned out that I already own them, so I already sold them. They're gone. Just some DVDs. Um, can't even remember what they were. There was one in particular that I know I sold. But anyway, I grabbed this one. Uh, I, the Postman Always Rings Twice. Kind of uh, an older Jack Nicholson film. He kind of falls in love with this woman, and uh, it, it involves a murderous plot to kind of win, win her. I, I guess he works for this man. He falls in love with her wife type deal. Uh, but yeah, it sounded good. Jack Nicholson, Blu-ray. It was factory sealed when I bought it. It was like five bucks, I think. Eight bucks, maybe top. So I grabbed it. I love supporting little indie shops. So it was really cool to um, to see that. And next time I go there, I'll get the name of the shop in case any of you guys are ever in the Brattleboro, Vermont area, which I doubt anybody will be. But it's a beautiful area. I do love it. So um, they have a really cool record shop. It's like a step back in time. Taking a step back in time for sure. Last but certainly not least, we have the Mag uh, the Maggie, the Mandy media book uh, from Cook Media. They've been doing some awesome stuff lately, especially media books. Um, yeah, mostly media books, but uh, really nice special editions. I like Mandy. I saw it in theaters with my folks. I think I told you guys that story. I didn't love the film, but I thought it was pretty batshit crazy. And I love the actress who plays Mandy and the actor who plays the lead cult dude. He was great. She was great. Not enough of her in the movie, but they, they were great. Nicolas Cage wasn't bad. His normal batshit role. Pretty good, actually. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was the psychedelic, like, um, uh, viewpoint or 
um, I guess, what is it, like lens? I don't know. Just the way that the movie was shot, I wasn't really a fan of. Very psychedelic looking. It was like this filtered, trippy lens or whatever that they, they I don't, I'm not a, you know, film dude, so I don't know the technical verbiage, but um, I didn't really like that, the feel of that, but the acting was good. Uh, it was in the end and the act, the characters were kind of really unique, I guess you could say. So, uh, anyway, this is a nice media book. It's factory sealed. I'm going to leave it that way. I already own the movie on uh, US, standard U S Blu-ray. So just ordered it for the media book collection. Um, and that's it. So yeah, guys, uh, I can't believe I kept that under 20 minutes, but, uh, just, uh, just over now. So have a great, uh, rest of your, well, you guys are probably back at work too. So I'm going back to work tomorrow. Hope you guys had a great Christmas once again. Stay tuned for this weekend, Saturday night. I'll probably do the drawing for the 500 subscriber contest. I like to keep you guys in suspense anyway because nobody gives a shit. Let's be real. But um, thanks for watching. As always, catch you guys later. Peace. Guess what? I didn't turn it off. So fuck you. Fuck me for being a dumbass. Bye.